I heard there was this podcast, yo, about something funny like wrestling and so, and you really care about wrestling, don't you? There are drop kicks and leases all over the board, and then something called the Wrestling Hold. It's a super duper fun podcast about wrestling. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. Well, Fro and Bill and maybe a guest or two is here to hold your hand and guide you through a podcast about wrestling. We have a lot of extreme fun and that's without a gun because I needed something to rhyme fun with. That wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show. Well, sit your behinds gently down and listen to our podcast sound and try to guess this week's pro question. You win a lot of cool things and also help Bill with his bill, Bill Bills. That's a super duper fun competition. That wrestling show. 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 That wrestling show That wrestling show That wrestling show Hello, everybody, and welcome to That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters, as you and I and Fro and everybody listening, we are still on that road to WrestleMania, only three weeks away. It doesn't seem possible. Three weeks away with a really, really shitty pay-per-view in between. Well, you know what? That's going to be one of the things that we talk about this week on the show. We're going to review <laughs> Fast Lane, and we're also going to review uh, Ring of Honor's pay per view. So I think you guys are going to tell which one of the two we both preferred. Yeah, I mean, I called it Chick Lane on the Mother Digital System. Um, that's saying something. Yeah. I, I will. I will give it this. Uh, this. I will give it this. <laughs> the main event was really good. Hmm. All right. Um. Plus, we'll go through our weekly trivia and um, other stuff. But before we get into that, I figured uh, while we have the chance to do a little family business, if you will. Um, cause you know, we're all 
family here. You know, we're all friends. You, me, the guy at the deli, all of us. Uh, there's three things I want to bring up. And then okay. we'll dive right deep into the show. The first one, and this is going to make everybody happy, is okay. we made it to 200 members on our Facebook group. We made it yesterday. So because of that, um, as I promised, everybody who had won an entry into our WrestleMania drawing will get three additional uh, entries into the WrestleMania draw. And, and the last three people that signed up or that uh, joined our group will also get an entry into our WrestleMania draw. Oh, and I presume you have their name? Uh, yes. Um, now, here's the funny thing. Before I announce, uh, or before I welcome in our new members. Um, mm -hmm. when we recorded last week, we were at 197. Okay. And then we went down to 196. Yes, because, uh, somebody called through the new uh, went out of uh, Facebook. Yeah. So... I just want to welcome our new members who have been added in between uh, from the last show to this show. And they are Muhammad Yusuf, Troy Callahan, uh, Ronald Harvey, Todd Bernard, and Scott Kessilis. And I want to say real quick that Troy, Ronald, and Todd are going to get the additional, or they're going to get one entry. Scott just misses out on that one. <laughs> sorry, Scott. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I I presume they will be really happy. Yeah. So, hey, at least we got the 200. That's, let's just keep it moving, folks. All right, second thing. Uh, I posted this last night on our Facebook group, and it'll be up when you guys are listening to this if you haven't seen it. Um, I asked you guys, do you guys want a new logo once WrestleMania is over? Uh, pretty much everyone is saying yes, so we're gonna get oh. a we're gonna get a new logo. Um, I'm not sure when. Um, I got I got my guy. Um, Mike, who okay. who has done podcast logos, and we got a pretty good deal on how we do this. I ask him to make um, my podcast logos, and I pay him uh, in different ways um, through his Amazon uh, wish list. Ooh. So that's a pretty good deal, I figure. <laughs> when you said it in different ways, I was like, ooh. <laughs> you dirty, dirty boy. I am a dirty, dirty boy. Um, <laughs> you, you can always presume I'm a dirty boy. Right. <laughs> um, and the final, uh, the final piece of business that I want to bring up is uh, the Patreon page. Um, I realized the mistake. Why I haven't had any... Uh, subscribers, donators, whatever you want to call them. Because when I did the goals thing, right. it was more about me. What I wanted. So I've changed it up. And there's three goals that we have. And I want and this is going to be the you guys listening to this are the first ones to hear what the new goals are. Okay? And and I think they're pretty reachable. I presume uh, there's some naked pictures uh, of me? Uh, no. 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 Please don't no. ever send it to me. Ever. <laughs> uh, I, I just presumed you wanted it. No. <laughs> Maybe your girlfriend, but not me. Uh, the first goal, if we are to reach a hundred dollars, I will bring back 
a show that Fro was a guest on before. I will bring back in my life the podcast about you. Literally. Yes, literally. <laughs> you we're going to you're going to tell your life story to the, everyone and so if you do that, if we get to $100, I will bring that back and I will upload the old the, the old episodes. I have all 8 episodes. So can you can you do me a big favor and send me the episode I'm on? Yeah. Me? Yeah, I can do that. Can you do that? Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, if we reach two hundred fifty dollars, I will do exclusively for Patreon only. So this is going to be one of the few Patreon only, like maybe the only one right now. I will do wrestling commentary for matches that have no commentary on it whatsoever because there's a lot of it on the WWE Network there was a DVD of unreleased matches so if we reach $250 I will do that just for all of you who donate and that will be at the $250 goal now finally if we get to the $500 goal and this is one that I've wanted to do for a while, but I think we need the motivation to do it. If we reach $500, I will start a Charlie Brown podcast. Ooh. Because I grew up on that. Uh, I was called that time to time by my parents when I was a kid. I still am to this day. Do you know what that reminds me of, uh, Bill? I presume that you have uh, forgotten this, but uh, we actually own the listeners' uh, podcasts. Yes, we do, Ultimate Beastmaster. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Did I presume correct you... that you had correct uh, that you forgotten? Yeah, I. You know what? We'll get in. <laughs> you know what? That'll be another thing. We'll get in. It, like maybe in the spring. Maybe we'll start yeah. that in the spring. So, so I have still not watched one single episode of that because of uh, because I wanted to do that for the podcast. Right. Huh? Well, you know yeah, what? I'm then fine. you know what? It'll just be easy because we could just start from we could start back over from the beginning. Oh, we are going to start from the beginning so, because I have not seen a single episode of that. Wow. All right. No. We just got to figure. Pro- like we'll probably start doing that post. WrestleMania and into oh, the spring. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. I mean, we're all so busy right now. I mean, there's there's WrestleMania. I'm close to the end of season 6 of South Park. Um yeah. So we're going to we're going to fit this in, folks. So go to the Patreon page, patreoncom backslash Bill's World of Podcasts and please subscribe, donate, you know, tell your friends. And, uh, and a friendly reminder to everybody got, that got tickets to the drawing, there is still two one-year subscriptions to the lowest, the uh, lowest, uh, uh, what do you call it? Oh, the, the large right. the rewards level in the drawing for the WrestleMania drawing. Yeah. So. There you go. Two. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Not one, two. two. And I'll post the link up in our Facebook group so, you know, people can One join. year you get to support Bill. One. One year. For free. Mm-hmm. Just, just because you know some silly question. I know. All right. Uh, let's... <laughs> and, I, and I made it really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wanted so much to... <laughs> trick you this week as well <laughs> oh boy i can't wait to get into that uh well let's start with the story of the day because we are okay. doing this a day late but not a dollar short um <laughs> you've never heard that joke before day late in the dollar short no. really no oh. well um the the big news today mark the dates down ladies and gentlemen sunday april 7th 2019 
WrestleMania 35 heading back to MetLife Stadium in the upper New Jersey, New York City area. The oh. announcement was made official today uh, with a press conference, obviously. And this is how it's going to be done. WrestleMania, obviously, will be at MetLife Stadium, like I just mentioned. The Hall of Fame, TakeOver, Raw, and SmackDown will all be held at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, I'm not surprised by this. Cause no, me neither. I would heard that or Philly was going to be the one. So, um, I, I I might go back for that one next year. Mm, mm -hmm. So, um, it it'll it'll just depend on where everything is, you know, location wise, and because what I really want to do is I really want to go to the Hall of Fame ceremony. Mm -hmm. Like that's something I really want to do. So. Is that because of your love for everyone that's there? Uh, sort of, and and just to say, hey, I was at a Hall of Fame ceremony. Yeah, you never been to one? No. Oh, oh, okay. Mm mm. Mm mm. So, maybe maybe next year I'll get to go. I'll have to wait and see. Um. Other news, and let, let's get the elephant out of the room again. Mm -hmm. uh, this week on Raw, they announced that, and this is a week-long story, so Monday they announced on Raw that we would be having the first annual Fabulous Moolah Memorial Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania. Well... <sighs> Well, folks, as soon as that announcement came, everybody was becoming a critic, and they're like, oh, why are they doing this? She was a terrible person. Why did she get a match? And blah, 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 blah. So, she was a terrible person. Well, I know. <laughs> well, I know. So, you, can't, you can't assume that everybody likes her. Right. So... Then, because um, there were a lot of, like, petitions online for them to get rid of, or to take the Fabulous Moolah name off of that. So yesterday, it was announced that that match will no longer be the Fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. And basically, you all can thank Snickers for that. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, because Snickers threatened to pull their ad, their their ad support from WrestleMania if they did not change the name. And then, okay, so now the match is the the WrestleMania Women's Battle World. That's what it is now. Mm. Now there's a new petition. To name this match the China Memorial Battle Royal. Oh, no! They are never, ever going to happen. Never, ever going to happen. Right. And you can take that to the fucking bank. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta ask you, <laughs> because... You, you you have been a fan for a while, but you haven't, you know, like, our, our years are different. Right. When you first heard of the, the, the match being, you know, the Fabulous Moolah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. What was your initial thought? I thought, why the fuck are they doing this? She was a terrible person. All right. And then I get I guess when they changed it, you probably were one of the many millions of people who were doing card wheels. Well, well, if I you assume that I can do card or card wheels. Well, that's what I was about to say. Can no can uh, Norwegians do card wheels? <laughs> <laughs> you 
you say assume incorrectly. There you go. Wow. Okay, here's my... Okay, this is my thought, and I'm going to defend what my thought was. Honestly, at first, I was like, okay, they're having a match, named after the fabulous Moolah. And, and, and let me let me say why. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't defend any of the shit that she did outside of the ring. I mean, who, anybody that does is out of their mind. <laughs> I mean, she took 25% of the pay from the other female wrestlers. She treated them like shit. Prostituted some of them, mm-hmm. and, and 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 you know she she was we talk, we talk, we talk about literal prostitution. Yes. Like, oh, she prostituted someone. Like, right. No, not 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 like you, you can't assume that. Right. Uh, you have to assume that she actually did did it for real. Yeah, and. I, I, and I understand, hey, you know, she grew up dirt poor, but that's not the way you treat everybody, you know, for what you, you know, what happened in your childhood. Mm-hmm. I look at it more from what she did in the ring than she did out of the ring. In the ring, she was one of the first big names in female wrestling in the United States. Because it was basically her and Mildred Burke and June Byers and Penny Banner. Those would be the four, and Mae Young. Those would be the five that were the early influences to women's wrestling. If you look strictly at what she did in the ring, I have no problem. I have no problem with her having the, the match named after her. What she did outside of the ring is a whole other ball game. It really is. And you see, this is why we have the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Because Andre, not only did he do a lot of stuff out of the ring, or in the ring, but he did a lot of stuff out of the ring. And that's what we're going to see. I don't, what I don't get is why they don't do the May Young. Because you had the May Young Classic, you can't do two things, you know. Why not? Well, now somebody suggested they do the Sensational Sherry Memorial Battle Royal. Oh yeah, I I could get with that. Or or what about the Alundra Blaze Battle Royal? Right. Yeah. So I think. but I think I think they learned something from this, and I think like I I am going to I'm going to th- think that Snickers were so smart that they actually saw how much backlash this mm-hmm. because I, I was like fuck this why are they bringing her name to the front right so many other uh, female wrestlers that did so many things outside. Outside of the ring. Yeah. It's amazing. I think what's going to happen is this. For this upcoming WrestleMania, it will just be the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Oh, no, there's not going to be a male one. Well, now, now hold on. Hold on. I don't, I don't think so. You don't think so. All right, we'll have to wait. No, and... I don't, I think this is going to, uh... To go instead of the Andre, uh, Andre the Giant, Andre the Giant one. But my thing is this: mm. they will have a name by next WrestleMania, by WrestleMania 35. They are going to think long and hard for over a year, and they're going to pick a name. They're going to they're going to sit at it. They're going to think long and hard, and they're going to be okay. Who deserves to have this, you know, battle royal named after her? Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to happen. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Definitely. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how everything goes with that. 
Um, let's briefly talk about uh, the Hall of Fame because yes, they finally have a celebrity for this year. Well, is it a celebrity though? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I asked Margaret uh, if she knew who Kid Rock was, and she's like, "Who? Kid Rock?" Well. I'm glad you. I'm glad we're talking about this because, Fro, I have a surprise for you. Oh, we, we there? No, we have a special guest. It's not Kid Rock. Okay. Um. So, Fro, I know you're going to have questions for her. So uh, let's welcome in Stephanie McMahon. Hello, Stephanie. Oh. Hello. I am Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. Who is this? This is Frode from <laughs> from another digital system and that wrestling show that you're listening to right now. Your name sounds like a tongue twister. It is a wrong tongue twister. That's uh, why everybody called me Fro. Okay. Um. So, uh, Stephanie, uh, this is Bill. Hi, Bill. No, it, it's Bill. Um, we we want to know why is Kid Rock going into the Hall of Fame? Uh, you know, for the celebrity wing. Well, to be honest, there weren't that many people left. I mean, we could have done many other celebrities, but Kid Rock, he's so famous. He's one of the popular acts today that we just had to pick him. Um, so, st- really popular? He was popular like 10 years ago. Hey, wait, isn't this 2008? No, it's 2018. Well, then why is there a Republican in the White House? <laughs> That's how things go. Well, you know, when I brought up who to, who to get in, it came down to two people. Kid Rock was one of them. The other person was Man Person. Man Person? Yes! That is what I call Kid Rock. Is man person. Man person. Doesn't it catch? Doesn't it have a, a nice catch to it? Um, not really. Also, I have a question for Stephanie. Yes. Stephanie, what is it, Swiss man? Uh, how is it going to feel when you lose at WrestleMania against uh, Ronda Rousey? That's a funny joke. You want to hear my laugh? Ha! Huh. You see, I have a game plan along with my husband, Triple H, or HHH. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to blind her before the match. And then I'm going to pin her with our own referee. Do you know what you sound like, Bill? It sounds like a cross between uh, 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 that pig in, in, in Sesame Street. What, you, what is uh, her name again? What What do you mean, Bill? This is Stephanie McMahon! <laughs> you sound like that pig <laughs> that Kermit is in love with. Uh, I don't remember her name. Man Person Hall of Fame 2019! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, what is her name again? Oh, uh, uh, Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy. Yeah, you. it was Miss Piggy. Oh my god. Okay, real quick before before we get back into Kid Rock. Yes. So last night I had a uh, I had to listen to some songs for um, a guest appearance that I'm going to be making real soon, which Ooh. I teased about on my Facebook, and I'll tell you what it is for uh, off the air. So. I remember, or I saw on YouTube, oh, there's an ad for the Muppet Babies, because Muppet Babies is coming back. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're <laughs> bringing that back. But, it, but, okay, but here's the thing. Not all the cast is there. So, like... Of course not. Rolf isn't there, Scooter isn't there, Skeeter isn't there. Aww. So, it's Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, but. Gonzo... Um, uh, Animal, Fozzie, yeah. and Summer the Penguin. Yeah. Do you know, 
Do you know who does a really, really, really good... Uh, oh, what is it uh, uh, called again? Miss, um, Miss Piggy? No. Um, or Kermit. Oh, the blue one. Oh, the Gonzo. One. Gonzo. No, the blue one. The other blue one. The other blue one. Um, uh, Cookie Monster? <laughs> no, I don't... I don't... <sighs> Grover! Grover! It's Grover. Okay. I don't remember what his name was. Grover! No. It's not Grover, not Cookie Monster, not Gonzo. Uh, Harry Monster? You know, he, he talks a little like this. He talks like this. Oh, God. Um... Oh, oh! This is gonna kill me. If you show me the picture, oh my god! Elmo, Elmo, Elmo is red. Oh, Elmo is red. Are you colorblind, Froer? Is that what you're trying to tell us? <laughs> well, Elmo is red. Yeah. Okay. And he's the Muppet, right? Yeah, he is. He's on Sesame Street. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so back to uh, what I was getting at. So I watch the trailer, and they do the theme song. Fro, they killed the theme song. They killed it. It's terrible. No. It's terrible. No. And then, and then, okay, so they still have Nanny, right? They call her Miss Nanny. What? I... Miss Nanny? No! Oh. It's Nanny! Nanny! You asshole! Okay. All right. Sorry. Got it. T- t- tell us how you really feel about it. I-, I I had to get that off my chest. All right. So uh, so back anyway. to our anger of Kid Rock. Kid- yes, Kid Rock. Yes. Uh, we had because some. He's, he's such a celebrity. Right. Um. So we had reactions on our Facebook group. Are you ready for them? Uh. Ruben says. F Kid Rock. <laughs> Did he say fuck? Yeah, well he he put F dot dot dot. So Okay. Uh Brian used a picture of an angry My Little Pony. <laughs> followed by Followed by I shall spit on his doorstep patoy. Doing his Iron Ooh. Sheik impersonation. Yes. Uh, sure. Joe wrote, Trash! He will get booed off the stage. Yeah, he will. There's a good chance. Uh, people will boo Kid Rock. Who the fuck cares about Kid Rock? Apparently WWE. Absolutely nobody. <laughs> uh, Dean wrote, Why do WWE like him so much? Yeah, that's a good question. A Mitt wrote, Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. So pretty much for the money. Uh, uh, Steven wrote, What does Kid Rock have to do with the WWE anyways? Well, I, I like, okay. I can make a case for him being in the Hall of Fame. I can if I am really, really drunk and messed up with drugs. Uh I think that's the only reason I could make a little like case for him. Right. But yeah, he has played in some Raws and some WrestleMania. And, yeah. yeah. He, well, in the video package, but they he, mention he's the only person to ever perform on Raw Tribute to the Troops at WrestleMania. Oh boy, that's a big deal. <laughs> Not really. My apologies yeah, to the troops who had to listen I, to him. I, you can you can presume this. And I, I will say this. You can presume this really, really clear. And I hope you're listening because you can presume this. Okay. I am going to be so fucking angry when I see him going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I have to read one more. Ruben has the best one. Because he, he did write earlier and then he posted another one. And this is the best one. Are you ready, Fro? Yeah. I told a Kid Rock fan the news. 
She thought he was going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, LOL. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there's more... There, there, there's a bigger chance for me to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, I think you and I got a better shot than Kid Rock. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh. And this is this is how we're gonna wrap up on Kid Rock. Is he the worst selection ever for the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, um. Yeah. I'd have to say he's the worst. And 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 that's with Donald Trump is in the Hall of Fame. Well, okay. Now Donald Trump <laughs> number one got in before he was ever president. That's number yes. one. Number two, I will defend Donald Trump being in the Hall of Fame. I Oh, will, I will defend it as well. Yeah. Because he was the one that brought four and five to Atlantic City. He oh, had yeah. He had the Battle of the Billionaires at 23, which was a big deal. And then there was that one week on Raw where he was the owner and he said that everybody was going to get refunded if they went to the box office the next day with their ticket and it actually happened. So, yep. so Donald, so the Donald gets a pass for me. No, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I totally agree. If it should be a president, that's another. No, story. that's a. Yeah, yeah. That's another story. All right. Uh, one more. Th- yeah, one more thing, and then we're going to do our trivia. Um, yeah. The semifinals of the New Japan Cup has set or has been set. It nice. the final four. I'm I'm actually surprised with the four. It is yeah. Juice Robinson, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Sonata. Okay, I'm not surprised about Sonata. And Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, I correctly guessed three of them, I think. So the semifinal matches are Juice Robinson against Tanahashi. And oh, Zach Tanahashi over there. Oh, God, yeah, it has to be Tanahashi. <laughs> I'm sorry, Juice, but you're, yeah. And the other semifinal match is Sonata and Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, that is going to be a nor open. Uh, Sex Saber Jr. I think. All right. Yeah, because Sonata recently had an opportunity. So yeah. But then it comes down. Okay, so we both have Tanahashi and Saber in the finals. Yeah. Where do you go with this one? Because oh, that's, that's actually pretty hard. Yeah. Because I have a theory in my mind. Okay, if Tanahashi wins. He yeah. he might not go for the heavyweight title. He might want uh, his rematch at the Intercontinental title. Yeah, that was uh, what I was thinking as well. Whereas with Saber, if he wins, I think he's just going to go straight for Okada. Straight, yeah, for Okada. So, it'll be interesting. Mm. Absolutely. All right, uh, let's get to our trivia. Tri- yes, trivia. Uh, the question last week. What round did Brock Lesnar win at UFC 100? And this was, again, a close one by mere minutes. Ruben Vasquez guessed correctly it was the second round in that fight that Brock Lesnar retained the UFC heavyweight title. He, yeah, he got that in by, like, mere minutes. So, All right, so, Fro, you said you got a tough one this week for me. I got it. I got to hear this one. I, I tricked you because again, uh, as long as it's a pay per view, it's allowed, right? Yes. Right. So we go go for the K one World Max Ten Twenty Fourteen World Championship Tournament oh, final. Dear. Oh dear lord! And this is kickboxing for everyone. right. Wonders out there. Uh, so, uh, but I will go for the listeners. City. What city was this in? What city was this in? And 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 the what's the name of the event again? Uh, it is K One World Max Two Thousand and Fourteen mm. World Championship Tournament Final. Okay. Whew. 
That's a mouthful. Say that fast ten times. K one World Max twenty fourteen World Championship Tournament yep. Final. And what? Yeah. So what city was it? I will give it. The venue is indoor athletic stadium. That's the uh, if 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 something is a little uh, what do you call it. Uh, uh, up in the air. Call it Indoor Athletic Stadium. <laughs> and the date of this pay-per-view is October 11, 2014. We will uh, not do many, but I will give you this. You won in the final of this. Was it Bukala Banshakamek or Enrico Kale? I'm going to say the last guy. Yes. Yay! I got it right. Yes. You want to guess what city it was in, by the way? Sounds like it could be Japan related, so. Maybe. Uh, oh. Send it to you. Yeah, I'm not even close. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. I'm not even close. That sounds like the name of so, a sandwich. Yes. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Can I have one? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but uh, um, one of the things that I, I wanted to, to, to give you, it, it's like K1. Have you ever heard of this? I, I, I uh, had heard of it. I've never seen uh, it. Uh Yeah. All right, so there's your question, folks. What city was that big-ass tournament held in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Fro, you got tricks. You got tricks. I got Um. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse you. Uh, real quick, real quick streaming news. Uh, we had oh. talked about this a few weeks ago, that... All Japan Pro Wrestling was going to get into the streaming service game. Uh, they have announced their launch date. Are you ready? Yeah. It's this Monday. <laughs> and you guys can have it for only 900 yen a month, which here in the U.S. is like, Eight nine dollars, so for, I, I don't know how much that would be in uh, the euro. You know, like the pound and all that. I'm not really sure, but everyone who signs up gets the whole first month free. So, mm-hmm. so you want to once it becomes available, you want to check it out. Okay, so fro. I knew that I would somewhat get a little bit of revenge on you for the last couple weeks of your trivia. Because I have a trivia game of my own. Oh, yay! But it's not a wrestling event. Oh. Because today, Fro is going to play Guess the Winners of the 2017 Wrestling Observer Newsletter Awards. Oh. So, uh, this has sort of become a tradition um, with other people. Yeah. I think this is the first or second time you've done this, Fro. Second. Okay, second time. Um, I have the categories, and we're only going to do wrestling-related categories. Because there are some MMA. Well, I, unless you want to do MMA. Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll pass on MMA. Okay. <laughs> I don't follow MMA at all. I don't either, so... Real fighting? No. Who cares? No. Um, Who cares about real fighting? Yeah, right? (laughs) Okay, so I will give you the category, and I will give you the top three. You have to figure out who finished first, or in some cases with some awards, who was the highest ranked wrestler. Okay. All right. And and you guys can play along at home too for fun. 
uh, to see if... Can I presume that Brock Lesnar is not on this list? Um, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. So, keeping with the tradition that was started by our dear close personal longtime friend and listener, Eric Dolman, we will start with the Category B Awards. So these... Okay. Consider them like the technical awards of the Academy, you know, like the Academy Awards and all that stuff. Right. So the first category we're going to do is Best Box Office Draw. The okay. w- The winner of that award was Conor McGregor. Who among these three wrestlers finished the highest? Was it Tetsuya Naito, Kenny Omega, or Kazuchika Okada? Kenny Omega. It was Kenny Omega. Very good. Uh, Omega finished second. Naito finished third. And Okada finished fifth in that category. Uh Alright. Next category. Feud of the Year. Uh The Feud of the Year. There is a winner in this. But which one is it? Is it Kushida versus Hiromu Takahashi, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Tetsuya Naito, or Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada? The last one. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> nine. <laughs> not, even, not even a doubt in my mind. Nine hundred thirty-eight votes for Omega Whoa. and Okada. Oh. Uh, second place was Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, and they had 62 votes. Whoa. whoa, whoa. That's... I presume that's quite a difference. Uh, yeah, that's a big difference. Uh, Tanahashi and Naido finished third, and Kushida and Takahashi were fourth. Mm. Next category. Most improved. The most improved. Mm, I know what, uh, my, uh, my answer to that. Yeah, okay. Is it... Braun Strowman, mm-hmm. Ve- there, there he was. <laughs> Velveteen Dream or Juice mm-hmm. Robinson. <laughs> I'm going to go with my man. Braun. Yeah. Yep, it's Braun. I mean, next year, like I am going to presume he wins absolutely everything. I'm going to presume he wins. Uh, best wrestler. I'm going to presume he is going to win best of improved wrestler. I presume that he will win absolutely everything. That man. Well, we'll yeah. th- you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, uh, but yeah, Braun was the winner in that category. By the way, Roman Reigns wins. Lol. Uh, Juice <laughs> Juice Robinson was second, and Velveteen Dream was third. Next category, most charismatic. Okay. Is it Kenny Omega, Tetsuya Naito, or Matt Riddle? I'm going to go with my man first. Kenny Omega. Um, no, it was actually Naito who won the award. Oh. Omega, okay. yeah. o- Omega finished third in that category. Connor McGregor finished second. Mm. All right, next category. <clears throat> so that's your first one you've missed. So you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, next category, the Brian Danielson Award for the Best Technical Wrestler. Is it Zack Sabre Jr., Hideki Suzuki, or Kushida? Kushida. It is actually Zack Sabre Jr. who won the award. Ah, uh, oh. This is the fourth year in a row that Sabre has won the award. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Is this like the third or fourth one in a row? All right, next up is the Bruiser Brody Memorial Award for the Best Brawler. The Best Brawler. Is it Tomohiro Ishii? Ketsuyori Shibata or Minoru Suzuki? Number two. Uh, Shibata finished second 
The winner okay. is Tomohiro Ishii. Okay. And Braun Strowman finished eighth in that category. <laughs> I was just going to say, where is Braun Strowman? Uh, this is <laughs> this is the fourth year in a row that Ishii has won this award. Oh, okay. Next category, the best flying wrestler. Basically, the best high flyer. If Braun Strowman wins this, I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, uh, that would be funny, though. It would. How funny would would, would that be? <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, uh, so uh, the the top three, and you got to figure out who the winner uh, is. Okay, jokes. R- yes. Mm-hmm. Is it Ricochet, mm-hmm. Volador Junior, or Will Osprey? Will Osprey. Will Osprey. It is. Yeah. This is the second year in a, in a row he has won this award, and he won it by a pretty <laughs> considerable margin. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> there you go. Please don't die, honest. Oh, oh, my God. That's funny. All right. Oh, my God. Next, <laughs> next category, most overrated. Oh. Most overrated. <laughs> I know my answer. Well, Can I say it before, before you say it? Go ahead. Uh, Roman Reigns. He is in the top three. <laughs> now, now let me tell you who the other two are, and then I'll let you... I'll give you a chance if you want to retake your pick. Okay. The other two, Jinder Mahal and Baron Corbin. <laughs> they really picked three good there. I am going to guess that Baron Corbin is third. Right, you're correct. <sighs> I want to say Roman Reigns, but it is Ginger Mahal. The correct answer is Ginger Mahal, so I'm changing my answer. It's a Good thing you changed your answer because it is gender mall. <laughs> I mean, I I will give this to Roman Reigns. He's better than Ginger Mall. <laughs> Fro, I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you. Gender had 500 more votes than Roman Reigns did. Oh, holy shit! I can I can presume that. People voted for that then. <laughs> and somehow Braun Strowman finished eighth in that category. No. I I thirteen Morons. people. Thirteen people. Morons. Alright. So, thirteen morons. So we go from the most overrated to the most underrated. Oh, I almost want to guess here as well. Okay. Underrated in WWE. Well, this is all of wrestling, so it could be any. Yeah, but uh, who's most underrated in WWE? <laughs> There's a I'm good list. Say, I'm actually going to say something really strange and say, say, I miss Sane because he was used for the fucking longest time before now. Well, Sammy is in fourth. Oh, so he just okay. finished out of the top three. So here are your three. Okay. okay. Is it Tomohiro Ishii, mm-hmm. Rusev, or Finn Balor? Oh. Ooh. Oh, that's a good top three. I assume the Japanese wrestler is number three. Um, actually, he finished second. Oh. Let me let me tell you how close this was, Fro. Okay, okay. Two votes separated oh. first and second. Really? Yep. Ah, oh, Rusev or Jesus, that's a good question. I I love both of them. That's yeah. why I'm kind of I'm, I I like all three of these guys to be honest. Yeah. Uh no Finn Balor. It was Rusev. Oh, good for Rusev. Uh, Balor had 80 votes. Oh, okay. 
Uh, all right. Uh, next category, Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. You're okay. going to know only one of these names. Okay. Is it Bianca Belair, mm-hmm. Ketsuya Kitamura, mm-hmm. or Microman? <laughs> Microman? That is a that is a real name. <laughs> is that someone called his penis? It's like, <laughs> welcome to Microman. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Since he has so such a funny name, I will go with Michael Mann as number three. Uh, he finished number two. Oh, okay. So the Japanese wrestler I never heard of, or the woman that was really good in that... Uh, tournament. Tournament I watched. Uh, I'm going to go with the woman. She finished third. Kitamura was ah. the winner. Okay. I never heard of it. Uh, next one, best non-wrestler. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Is this WWE? Uh, well, the top three are. Okay. Can I guess that one of them is Paul Heyman? He is in the top three. Uh, can I guess that one of them is Shane? He is in ninth. Oh. Yeah. Daniel Bryan? He's in the top three. Uh, Come on, Fibola, you can guess the third one. Is it the commentator? No, she is currently in NXT. Oh, then I have no clue. All right, the third one is Zelina Vega. Oh, Zelina Vega, okay. She's a... Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, (laughs) yeah! Oh, yeah! She's good. I love her heel personality. All and right. how she stands behind her man. So who do you have as the winner? Well, not Daniel Bryan, that's for fucking sure. Um, no, I'm going to go with my heel, heely friend. From NXT. Oh, Vega? She yeah. finished second. The okay. winner was Daniel Bryan. Alright, uh, next. That's, that's one of the, my biggest disappointments of this mm-hmm. year. Mm. Yeah, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, next category is Best Television Announcer. Oh, okay. Is it Corey Graves? Uh-huh. Mauro Ronaldo or mm. Don Callis? It's Mauro. Oh yeah, it's Mauro. Oh yeah. <laughs> by, by a long shot. Uh, this can is. I, can I can I presume he won by a landslide? Um, six votes. Oh, I presumed incorrectly then. Corey Graves was second. Oh. Um, Mauro Ronaldo. This is the third year in a row he has won this award. <laughs> so we go from the best to the worst television announcer. Oh, <laughs> I have an answer for that as well. Would you like to tell me? Booker T. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Booker T wins the award. Yeah. Uh, Percy Watson was second, and JBL was third. I could guess that. <laughs> I mean, it had to be Booker T. <laughs> Who else? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, next category. Best mm-hmm. major wrestling show. Oh. All right. Okay. Is it New Japan Dominion? Mm-hmm. NXT TakeOver Chicago? Mm-hmm. Or New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 11? Uh, Wrestle Kingdom 11. Oh, yeah. Wrestle Kingdom 11 is the winner. <laughs> by long shot. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to presume they won by like 50 votes or something more. Um, 600. Did I presume cor- correct? 600 votes. 
600 votes? Yeah. Whoa. They took first and second. Wow. Uh, TakeOver Chicago was fourth. UFC yeah. 217 was third. Oh, okay. So we go from the best to the worst. Oh. The worst show of the year. Okay, I have one in mind. Okay. Would you like to tell me? Uh, no. Okay. Was it Bound for Glory? Yeah. <laughs> there it was already. <laughs> I watched Bound for Glory. Yeah, you yeah. did. Well. Yes, okay. Triple A's Triple Mania. Okay, I haven't seen that. Or Battleground. Oh, Battleground was awful. But it wasn't as bad as Bound for Glory, so I need to go for Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory finished a distant third. No! Yep! (laughs) Wow! Wow! I I assume people were really, 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 really drunk when they voted for this. The winner! Wow, I assume that. The winner is Battleground. No. Yeah, oh, bro, oh. that was such a terrible show. It, it, it was shit, but it wasn't that bad. Oh, man. Well, good you thing I... You haven't even seen Bound for Glory. Yeah, you, you took my sins for that one. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> assume that I will never do that again. That you can assume. Next category, the best wrestling maneuver. Is it Okada's Rainmaker? Is it Omega's One Winged Angel? Or is it Naito's Destino? One Night Angel. One Winged Angel it is. Yep. Second year in a row he won that. Okay, next category. The most disgusting promotional tactic. (laughs) And Fro, I'm just going to tell you right now, the winner is WWE. But the question is, which promotional tactic was it? Okay. Was it Jinder Mahal racial interviews in feud with Shinsuke uh, Nakamura? That is the real winner, yeah. Was it WWE and Ultimate Warrior Leon Leonization in breast cancer campaign? No. Or... WWE promoting Jimmy Snuka as a hero in death. Oh, yeah. Oof, that was awful. Uh, no, it was Ginger Mahal. He finished second. Wow. <laughs> Behind the breast cancer thing? Nope. The winner, oh. WWE promoting Jimmy Snuka as a hero in death. Let's talk two seconds uh, about that. That okay. was awful. Oh, the Mahal thing? Yeah, it was. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so we go from that to the worst television show. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, I'm going to guess uh, TNA. They finished second. Whoa! Yep. Whoa! Now I really wonder what was first. Okay. Do, do you want me to tell you the winner? Yeah. Raw. No. Yep. No. Fourth year okay. in a row. Listen, listen here, people. Get out of that bandwagon. No, Raw is not worse than fucking Impact Wrestling. It's not. It's just wrong. <laughs> you got it wrong there, people. All right. So we go from that to the worst mm. match of the year. <laughs> oh. I, I have some contenders there. As All right. Guess. Was the worst match of the year Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton in the House of Horrors match? Oh, that was so awful. Was it Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton from WrestleMania? <laughs> I was so awful. Or... Was it the Triple A Rumble? I have 
haven't seen the AAA. Okay, so we're going to take that out of the picture. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Randy Orton. Yeah, and that I'm going to go with. <laughs> and you're also going to go with Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I'm going to go with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. I think that they won. But the question no, is... the WrestleMania one wasn't the worst, was it? Yeah, it was. It was? By uh, eight yeah. votes. Okay, here's my yeah. thing. That match was not that bad of a match. No, 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 no. The one after was worse. The, well, they missed the worst match of the year. The Punjabi prison match. That... that the Punjabi prison ma- match was awful. That gets my vote for the worst match of the year, and that finished fifth. Oh. Fifth! I totally agree. Yeah. Mm. So that goes That's in... Because, because of low quality coming out and... <laughs> Just everything about that match. Yeah. Uh, uh, low quality that much. That's all I have to say. Next one. Worst feud of the year. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> You're going to hear multiple names in this one. Uh-huh. Was it Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt? <laughs> Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal? Uh-huh. Or Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal? <laughs> Well, the, the thing with the Shinsuke Nakamura thing is, like, at least Shinsuke wrestled. Yes. But he lost. He lost against Jinder Mahal. Remember that? Yeah. Like, oh. I really don't know. I think all, all, all three of them I saw. Huh. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton. That finished third. Oh, the right. winner, Orton versus Wyatt. Or is it the winner, though? <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Very true. What, what, what would you vote for? Uh, I would have put Orton in Mahal. Yeah. Um, next category, worst promotion of the year. Draw again. No, no, no. The whole wrestling promotion. Oh, is it WWE again? No, he fin- uh, WWE finished third. Oh, good. Then I'm going to go with Impact. Oh, yeah. Impact Wrestling won that. <laughs> they have won that award every year since 2007. <laughs> is it winning, though? That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay, got to go through other categories because I'm not even going to make you guess these. Uh, mm-hmm. Best Booker was Gato from New Japan. Mm-hmm. Promoter of the Year was Takaiki Kidani from New Japan. Mm-hmm. Best Gimmick, Los Ingobernables. But I do want you to try this next one. Okay. Worst Gimmick. Oh. Is it? Jason Jordan as Kurt Angle's son. <laughs> I'm so happy that that is on the list. Yes. Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Or, oh. or Bray Wyatt as Sister Abigail. Bray Wyatt as Sister Abigail. Very good. That's the winner. Yes. <laughs> that was so awful. Uh, best pro wrestling book. The winner there was Crazy Like a Fox, the Brian Pillman story. Mm-hmm. The best pro wrestling documentary, Ric Flair, Thirty for Thirty. Yeah, that was. I mean, you and me cried there. So yeah, we we both really enjoyed that one. Okay, yeah. uh, now to the other categories. Uh, we will go to the pro wrestling match of the year. Ooh. Uh, and I'm gonna give you. I'm just gonna give you a heads up. The w- one of the winners is Kazuchika Okada. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just have to figure out which Okada match it is. Yeah, I was just going to say that Okada has been in a lot of good matches. Is year. it Okada versus Omega from Wrestle Kingdom? Mm-hmm. Is it? Okada versus Shibata from April, 
Or mm-hmm. is it Okada versus Omega, the rematch? Well, I've seen uh, two of them. Um, oh, this is hard. That's what she said. These are all really good matches, by the way, folks. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with the rematch. That would have been my choice, but that yeah, finished. But, but that yeah. finished second. The winner was Okada versus Omega from Wrestle Kingdom. Okay, yeah. I think the rematch is better. Oh my god, yeah. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Best weekly (laughs) TV show. Is it NXT, Mm -hmm. CMLL, Friday Night Arena Mexico, or New Japan World Pro Wrestling? New Japan. Yep, New Japan. Very good. All right. The promotion of the year. This might not be even close, folks. New Japan, Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. or WWE? Ring, no, it's not Ring of Honor, so it's New Japan. New Japan. Ring of Honor was second. Yeah. In that category. Uh, best. I, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to skip over best on interviews. Conor McGregor was the winner, but Chris Jericho finished okay. second. Oh, yeah. Oh. Tag Team of the Year. Was it the Usos, War Machine, or the Young Bucks? Oh, I like all three of them. I'm going to go with Young Bucks. Uh, Maybe the Usos, but uh, Young Bucks. Oh, yeah, it was Young Bucks. By a big, big margin. Can I presume over like five hundred votes? Or oh, like, like do I presume wrong? like twenty five hundred plus? Oh, uh, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> Next category: most outstanding wrestler. Ron Strowman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he. He's that not in the top the ten, answer. unfortunately. That is the correct answer. Uh, uh, but here are the top three. You got to figure out the winner: yeah. Kenny mm. Omega, mm. Kazuchika Okada, or AJ Styles. I think Styles comes second, and Omega go first. Actually, it is Okada that finishes first. Oh. Omega okay. was second. Styles was third. Okay. And the final award, the Luthez Ric Flair Award for the Wrestler of the Year. Yeah, again, the real answer is Braun Strowman, but I'm going to guess he's not even in the top ten. He is not in the top ten. No, because it was last year, not this year. Right. Yes. Uh, Okada? Yep, it was Okada. Omega finished second, (laughs) and Naito was third. Yeah. All right, so those were the awards. Okada had a really, really great. Year, oh my god, what a year he had! Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, well, let's get into the reviews of both shows. Uh, yeah, talking about Kenny Omega. Yeah, <laughs> let's start with the Ring of Honor 16th so anniversary fun. show. Oh my gosh, this was great. This oh, show, this show from beginning to end, yeah, was so good. Yeah, and they, 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 I presume you, you watch this, uh, 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 like, direct, you, you watched it when it was going on. Yeah, I, I, I ordered it on pay-per-view, because yeah. I wasn't sure about the streaming online, because what did happen was, uh, there was a little bit of a, con- not confusion, but technical difficulties, but once they were able to fix it, the streaming was good the rest of the way. Did you guess who was in the bear costume before he came out? Oh, I had no idea. Me neither. Uh, and I was so fucking happy. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about these matches. Um, uh, Meltzer did give was... a grade to all but one match, or all but two matches, actually. Okay. Uh, and I, I gave a grade to all the matches, so. Yeah. 
too. Um, okay, so the first one was a first round match in the Women of Honor tournament. Hana Kimura against Sumi Sakai. Now, I've never seen Hana Kimura before. Sumi Sakai, I've seen many times. I haven't seen any of those. Uh, this was a good match. A this, match. yeah. This was a very enjoyable uh-huh. opening match. Now, yeah. these are pre show matches, by the way, folks. Mm. Um, I was impressed by Kimura. I want to see more of her in action. Yeah, yeah. she was really good. Uh, she had some high flight stuff that was really good as well. Mm hmm. This was a good. This was a good match. Uh, Sumi Sakai won. I gave this a B minus. I gave this a B minus as well. All right. The other pre-show match was a quarterfinals match in the title tournament: Brandy Rhodes against Tennille Dashwood. Yeah, and I had seen both before. Because yeah, I know Emma. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll tell you. Brandy is getting better in the ring. It's gonna. It's well, I, I, I can tell you this: Emma was not really good in this match. Really, I did not. I did not like this match as much uh, more than the match before. I think the match before was better than this. Uh, but I, Emma, I I can see. And I'm going to call him her Emma, and sorry for that. Right. But 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 I I I can see that she was underused in WWE, mm-hmm. and and I think Ring of Honor will do something uh, good with her, and she is a great heel. Yeah. I'm not I'm not over with her name. I'm I'm not. Well, that is her real her, name. I know, I know, <laughs> but uh, I I I I don't know if it's going to stick. So. I'm just going to call her Emma. Okay. Um, I gave this a B minus. I gave this a C plus. Okay. And and I think Brandy's going to get better. She just needs more time in the ring, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emma Emma definitely was the strongest. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Now but, it was mentioned uh, hmm. during the two matches that the semifinals and the finals will take place. At Supercard of Honor. Yeah. So the semifinals is going to be on the pre show, Mm -hmm. and and then the final match will be on the main show that night. Yeah. All right. So we get to the main pay per view and our opening match there Hiromu Takahashi against Flip Gordon. This was a good match. Oh, this was a good opening match. Where did this come from? I I had no no interest in in this match in the beginning. I was like, okay, two men I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've seen him. Maybe I've seen one of them in some matches. And I was like, I was trying to figure out who was the heel and who was the face in this match. And then I, I it turned on me. Like it it, it clicked for me. And I, I was like, this match was good pacing and the chemistry in this match was really good. Yeah. Uh, this was just all around a very good match. It was a good yeah. opening match to start yeah. the pay per view, and it told a really good. It story did. As well. it, it did. Yeah, I th- I would love to see Flip Gordon go to New Japan and be a part of their Best of the Juniors tournament later yeah. on in the spring. Oh, he would be great in that tournament. I think he'd be really good. Oh yeah. Um. Hiromu got the win. I gave that a B minus. I gave that to B. Meltzer rated this three stars. So that's pretty fair. That's a pretty fair rating there. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Next match, uh, Punishment Martinez against the villain Marty Skull. Winner is the oh. next in line for a world title shot. And how good was this? Oh, this was another good oh. match. Yeah. There's something about the villain mm-hmm. I just love. I just love his wrestling style, and he wrestles with so much compassion. I, he he wants this. Yeah, you you can see it, there, man. Like I I think I think he's uh, uh, one of my favorite wrestlers right now. I remember when they did the 
first British boot camp, and he was right. one, and he was one of the contestants, and he yeah. was party Marty, and yeah. I thought he was awful in that. He was so annoying as party yeah. Marty, and yeah. then somewhere along the way, either he matured. Or he thought, you know what? The party gimmick's never going to get me over. I got to change who I am. And he becomes the villain. And this becomes not only probably one of the most popular gimmicks in all of wrestling, but it's just one of the most popular things going right now. Um, During this match, Marty gets busted open. And this is going to be a constant theme throughout the night. Um, There was like one... One time where the bleeding was on purpose. This was not it. He got oh, cut. No, no. He got cut above the eye. It was not as bad. I really there was one bleeding, and I did not like that right. bleeding. And it was clearly a blade. I really, I really liked the ending to this match. Marty goes for the bag. Everybody thinks there's powder. Martinez oh. covers his eyes. Marty just kicks him low. He never had the powder in the bag. Rolls him up to get the three count into victory. I and this match was better than I thought it was going to be. I gave yeah. this a B plus. I gave this a B plus as well. Meltzer gave this three and a half stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had the world TV title, the first of our four title matches. Uh, Silas mm-hmm. Young. This was, nope. uh, this was not uh, announced before, so right. This was a- uh, Silas Young challenging Kenny King. Uh, of the four title matches, this was my least favorite. Yeah, and uh, I felt I felt like I had maybe a bigger uh, anticipation for this match. Mm-hmm. But then, like, uh, I, I felt like something wasn't clicking right there. Yeah, and it was. The- Pacing and it was something like it felt a little stiff in 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 ways that I can't explain. Right. Yeah. And I like Silas Young. <laughs> I really do. And Kenny King, he's been getting a lot of exposure for all the right yeah. reasons. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> King got the win with the Royal Flush. I gave this a C plus. <laughs> I, I give this a C. <laughs> All right. Uh, Meltzer rated this two and three quarter stars. But after the match, we get surprise number one. Austin Aries comes out. Yeah, I was so surprised. And he has his titles. And he basically said... Kenny King, I want your TV title. That's the only mm. title I never held in Ring of Honor. And that's so, actually true. It so. is. So I think that match is going to... I don't know if it's going to happen at Supercard of Honor, though. But is it done in... Uh, TNA? No. Um, TNA? What I read was that Impact Wrestling gave the okay for Austin Aries to be at that show, to do that segment... Uh, because basically at this point, Impact is trying to get into as many good relationships with other promotions as possible, and yeah. Ring of Honor right now, they got such a good relationship with New Japan, with CMLL, yeah. with Rev Pro in England. Um, oh, yeah, it's smart to keep a, a good tone with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had the six-man tag titles in a Vegas street fight. It was SoCal Uncensored, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky against the Young Bucks and Hangman Page. Who? My worst, uh, worst match. Really? Yeah. Oh, I gotta hear this. <laughs> because I'm guessing this was your favorite. Uh, this was my second favorite. I love Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. I, I I adore Christopher Daniels. Uh, some of his heel work in TNA is maybe the best heel work I have ever seen in TNA. He's he's one of those heels where you you hate to love him. Yeah, and you love to hate him. 
and and when he sweeps his good friend uh, Gasterian, I can't ever say that name right, right. by the way. Um, like they they two have such good chemistry together. They know know each other yeah. like brothers. Yeah, they're right? very good. They are super good friends, and I think maybe I had too high expectations for this because uh, I, I I always knew that uh, they go they were going to win, uh, and I was like I was like kind of feeling that the pacing of the match kind of was a little like in the beginning was a little weird. Mm-hmm. And I, and I felt like, like I said, uh, I, I, I tried to explain this to, to Margaret as well. There, when it's no chemistry in the match, I get uninterested in mm-hmm. the match. And I felt that uh, when when they couldn't like communicate good to each other in the first half of the match, I will say the ending ending of the match, like the, the second half of the match was amazing. But the first Part of it felt a little. Uh... All right. Um, I thought for the majority, this was a good match. Mm. I thought, you know, they were doing everything right. Um, Kazarian was bleeding a yeah. good amount, and and that was the blade job that you. Had yeah, mentioned. and I didn't like it. Um. I'll tell you where this match sort of went down for me. Is when Bullet Club had the pin and were going... It looked like they were going to win the match. Right. Here comes Shane Taylor to pull the referee out. Now, I got nothing against Shane Taylor. He... Like, okay, I, I get the gimmick. He's a hired gun. He's getting better. You know, he is. But he didn't need to be in this match. That, that, that's my only complaint. Um, eventually, in the end, Daniels, Kazarian, and Sky win the match with a Boston Crab. We have new six man tag team champions. I gave this a B. Plus. Uh, I give this a C. Plus. All right. Meltzer rated this four and a quarter stars. Yeah. Uh, then we had Matt Taven against Cody. Uh, as Cody was, I, I, I just want to say that of course I don't adore, I don't adore, adore him. Right. Yeah, I like him a lot. I don't adore him. Right. Um, as Cody was making his way to the ring, uh, a fan apparently jumped over the rail and was taken away by security. He didn't show that, but pretty much that was the assumption. Uh, Cody had his wife Brandy and started to become my favorite mascot, Barry the <laughs> Drug Free Bear. I was so surprised. I've never seen like I I I think I'd seen pictures of Barry, but I never seen him. And I'm like, this might be one of the best things going in wrestling. That gimmick. Yeah. Uh, this match was okay. This was such a disappointment as well. <laughs> this was my least favorite match of the show. Yeah, this is my second la- last favorite match. I gave this a C, just a spoiler. But, uh, yeah. uh, but, but, uh, I want to like Cody. I like Cody. I don't know what happened, but just the chemistry was not there with this one. Um, the end, uh, the Kingdom try to help Matt Taven. They kick Cody low, but Cody reveals that he had a cup on, and um, Cody hits his finishing move. After the match is where it gets great. because the, Okay, I gave this match a C. Meltzer gave this three and a quarter. After the match is where it is great. Because, you know, Brandy gets in the ring and Barry the Bear gets in. So Cody gives his wife a kiss, which you'd expect. <laughs> then he's going to go hug Barry. Barry oh. pushes Cody down. And it's this oh. big shock because there has been 
dissension among the ranks of the Bullet Club. And they zoom in. And this is, it was so good. Oh, it was so good. Mm. Barry takes the head off, and it's Kenny Omega, and the whole building goes crazy. Of course they did. Oh, my, what a surprise. They pulled that off to perfection. So, uh, Kenny goes after Cody Rhodes, and then, after that, um, Brandy ends up making out with Omega, like, she gives him a big kiss and leaves lipstick on his face, and Kenny has this confused look, like, huh? But that was done so well, oh my gosh, I, I haven't heard that in the Ring of Honor show in a long time. I presume this got uh, the most talked about on the internet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This this was so good. Oh, and I, I the surprise element of it, I did not. It it was so good. Oh. It was so good. Uh, then we had the Ring of Honor tag title match: the Briscoes challenging Motor City Machine Guns. This was a good match. I think if it had gotten a bit more time, I think it would have been even better. Yeah, it was a little too short. Um, Mark ended up getting busted open during the match, so this is number three. Uh, but this one was not on purpose. This was an accidental um, injury. Um, but the Briscoes win with the J-Driller and Froggy Bow. And the Briscoes are the nine-time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Mm -hmm. I gave this a B minus. This gets a B minus for me. And Meltzer rated it three and three quarter stars. But then the main event. Oh, 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 what a match! Oh, hallelujah. This match. I, pre- I presume that this is your favorite. Oh yeah. Match. Oh, m- maybe Do my I favorite presume, match of the whole weekend. Presume correctly. This is my favorite match of the entire weekend. Jay Lethal challenging Dalton Castle for the title. This was an absolute fantastic match. This is an instant classic for Ring of Honor. It tells a very good story. It's back and forth. Castle gets injured, you know, during the match. Lethal tries everything to beat him, but Castle comes back. And then the ring announcer gets taken out accidentally. Dalton hits a suplex to where Jay Lethal, it looked like he could have broken his neck the way he landed. It looked scary. It really did. But it was so good. Um, and I, pre- I presume that everybody on the internet loved this match. I did not read one complaint about that match. Oh, so good. Jay Lethal hit the bangerang to retain the title. A That was a hell of a main event match. Oh my goodness. I gave this an A-. minus. I gave this an A. Oh. Uh, Meltzer rated it four and a quarter stars. Yeah. And then after that, Marty Skull came out uh, to confront Lethal or uh, Castle. And then on their Facebook, uh, Bully Ray basically said that in New Orleans, it's going to be Dalton Castle and Marty Skull for the world title. Yeah, and Marty Skull is going to win. Ooh. Uh I'm gonna give this pay per view an I gotta give this pay per view an A. It was so good. Uh yeah. It's really good. Um better then it's better than shit lands. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Uh f- what was your favorite match from this from this pay per view? On the uh, the main event. Yeah, I I'd have to go to main event as well. That was really good. Uh, my least favorite, I think you and I, we both agreed it was our least favorite, was Matt Taven and Cody. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, pretty much most people in our Facebook group gave this an A. We had a couple people who gave it a B. So really good grades for Ring of Honor all around. Mm. So now we go from the good to the head-scratching what kind of a pay-per-view was this. Talking about Fast Lane. Or Shit Lane. Um, so yeah, this is the... Not only is this the last pay-per-view before WrestleMania, but this is also the last... Uh, SmackDown exclusive pay per view for the time being. Yeah, yeah, no, without the out with the bang. Okay, <laughs> so this is the curse of 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 Fastlane. The curse. The curse. The curse of Fastlane. First year, shit pay per view. Second year, really good pay per view. Third year, shit pay per view again. So next year. Maybe good again? Maybe. Well, we'll well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, okay, so they did the, the pre-show. Um, and what a terrible, terrible pre-show. Yeah, it was Renee, Booker T, Art Garfunkel, oh, and David Otunga. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Sam Roberts. Oh, God. Oh, God. He looks like Art Garfunkel. He really does. He really does. Um, so we go to our pre-show match, mm-hmm. which was a six-man tag team match. Bree Zongo oh and Ty Dillinger against Chad Gable, Sean Benjamin, and Mojo Rawley. During the match... This should, be, this should be so much better than it was. Because I love Bree Zongo. I love Bree Zongo. This is so boring. Um... Uh, during the match, the fans chanted to Mojo Rawley that you can't wrestle. Uh-huh. Um, this, it was... Your words have never been spoken. This was an okay match. This no, could it This could have been better. It was not an okay match. It was bad. Um, Brizongo and Dellinger get the win. That surprised yeah. me. Oh, that definitely surprised me. I gave this a C. Oh, I gave this a D plus. All right. Meltzer gave this two stars. And we do have ratings from CBS Sports, but oh. not from ESPN. Mm. I, wonder, I wonder why. Uh, CBS gave this a C. So we go to the main show. Our opening match, which... Oh, th- I I thought this match was going to set the tone for the rest of the night. Me too. Shinsuke Nakamura against Rusev. Somebody did not come to this show prepared. It wasn't Rusev. Woo! I can't wait to see Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania. Uh, I, I thought that the way this match went. Mm. That after it, it was going to get good from there. I really did. Because I enjoyed this match. It was okay. I mean, I love Rusev. And he's underrated. Well, yeah, he won the most underrated (laughs) award. So, yeah, I I like Rusev. And it's always sad to see Rusev lose. But Uh, but I, I gave this a C+. I mean, it's okay. I'll tell you this. What I think with Rusev. This match, to me, Mm. showed me that post-WrestleMania, if it's Mm. Styles or if it's Nakamura, and it's probably going to be Nakamura, Rusev has to be one of the first rivals for whoever the champion is post WrestleMania, because I, totally I could get into a main event pay per view with Rusev challenging. He had he has deserved, he has earned the opportunity to and, be in the main event. And if and the, funny and uh, funny enough, that is somewhat not all his uh, glory. Right. I have to give kudos where kudos is made, and his companion is oh, Aiden better English, and yes. better and better and better. Yes, and better. yes. I yes. love Aiden English now. I don't want that pair to break up. 
I don't. Me neither. You can have English still be the smoke the, the smokesman. The spokesman. <laughs> smokesman. <laughs> you can still have him be the spokesman. He can wrestle every once in a while, but yeah. he's, you know, like, yeah, Rusev Day! You know. Um, I gave this a B, actually. Oh, this I give a C plus, yeah. Uh, Melter gave this three and a half stars, and CBS Sports gave it a B minus. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I do want to mention this real quick. Um, staying with Rusev. <laughs> okay, yes. I don't know if you've heard this story or not. I have. <laughs> okay, for those who have not heard, Rusev went on Twitter mm-hmm. and basically said, you know, I want to challenge a celebrity at WrestleMania. I want to face a celebrity. So, two celebrities have replied back to Rusev on Twitter. The first one, Macaulay Culkin. Mm-hmm. I saw that. Who wrote, I am officially accepting Rusev challenge to wrestle him at this year's WrestleMania you heard it here first, folks. Come at me, bro. Home Alone. Again. Yep. The the Home Alone match. To which Rusev replied, and I will do my best Rusev impression, I cannot hit little Kevin McAllister or Richie Rich. <laughs> to, okay. And to, the other celebrity was... Oh, no, no, oh, hold on real quick. Oh. Culkin's reply was, It's cool. I'd be doing all the hitting anyway. Hashtag, hashtag, you just got culked. The other celebrity, Skylar Aston. Who is he? Yeah. Who the fuck is Skylar Aston? Who, who, okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna type him up. Um, but he said that he challenges Rusev to a match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But I'm assembling my faction first. And if you think I'm outmatched, wait until you hear who I have in mind for my stable. To which Rusev replied, Ha! At WWE Drama King, can Al sing you? At Lana WWE, can Al dance you? And I, well, I can machka. Happy Rusev Day! <laughs> Um, so who is this guy? Okay. Uh, Skylar Aston is an actor. Okay. He has starred in movies such as Pitch Perfect and Pitch Perfect 2. Okay. He was in <laughs> the... Seen, never seen. He was in the Broadway musical Spring Awakening. Never seen. And appeared in other movies such as Hamlet 2, Taking Woodstock... Cavemen and 21 and over. I never seen it. He will be in the movie Hot Air releasing later this year. Oh, yeah. That is a bunch of hot air, isn't it? Uh, and he is currently the voice of Branch on the Netflix original series Trolls The Beat Goes On. <laughs> Jesus, mother of Christ. And uh, uh, he is married. I, I hate to break that to everyone. He oh he married Anna Kemp. Oh, I know her. Not Anna Kendrick. Anna Kemp. Just wanna. Does she have a pole? <laughs> hey. Camp, 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 camp jokes. Anyway. Ooh, one time at band camp. <laughs> okay, bro. Next match. <laughs> Uh, Randy Orton challenging Bobby Roode for the U.S. title. They mentioned a, they mentioned a lot that this is the one title Randy Orton's never won before. This match. It had a good beginning and then it just it took a nosedive. But the last two three minutes was okay. Uh, how did you feel about this match? Uh, 
okay. Oh, okay. Um, Orton won. After the match, Jinder Mahal got in the ring. They fought. Bobby Roode came in, gave the glorious DDT to both men. I gave this a B minus. I gave this a C minus. Um, Meltzer gave this three and a half stars. CBS Sports gave this a C plus. I was so pissed at your result. I was so pissed at you. <laughs> oh, by the way, how did the uh, betting for your? Uh... I got all mine right. Yeah. Was did this? I get all. Well, did I get all my rights? I think you did. Well, what I about did. the U.S. title match? Did you say or- Rude would win or Orton? I didn't think it. Oh, you didn't? Okay. All right. I think. Okay. Uh, then we had women's tag action as Naomi and Becky Lynch fought Natalia and Carmella. While watching this match, I was trying to think why is Car- or how is Carmella attractive? Because <laughs> there are times where she is attractive, and there are other times where she's not. She wasn't attractive in this match. No, no, she wasn't. I I don't find her attractive at all, to be honest. Uh this was a match to put in, and I feel bad because these. These four can have a good match together. This just... It really wasn't their day. It wasn't. Uh, Natalia and Carmella got the win. I gave this a C. This gets a C- minus for me. Right. You see a trend here? Yeah, I do. Uh, Melter gave this two and a quarter star. Mm-hmm. And CBS gave this a C minus. Mm-hmm. Thank you, CBS. Then we have the tag title match. So my okay. so my thought is, okay, this is gonna save the pay per view. <laughs> this is nope. gonna save the pay per view. Nope. Uh, yeah. Oh, what an awful match. Okay. What well, an awful, awful, awful match. And that. Just because of the Blunchen brothers. Oh, man. For fuck's sake. What a cluster for ending. I, okay. I liked how during the match, each team did the other's finishing moves. I liked yeah. that. I thought yeah. that told a good story. Yeah. It was like, okay, we can't beat you with our move, so we'll beat you with your move. Mm-hmm. So then. As everyone is on the ground, like Fro mentioned, the Bludgeon Brothers came out and ended the match, and then they just beat the crap out of everybody. And and they ended up giving Xavier a power bomb on the steel steps. And what happened was like Xavier starts like his body starts shaking. And I thought to myself, Oh my god, they did something real, like, real bad. Um, and then, what they also did during the pay-per-view was, like, when they showed the replay of them powerbombing Xavier, like, they paused the film, like, a half second before he hits the steps. Did you notice that? Mm, I did. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna surprise you, Fro. I could mm-hmm. not give this match a rating. Wow. The only reason okay. the only reason I couldn't was because I felt sort of robbed. I wanted a winner. Right. I just wanted a winner. And but but here's the thing though. Bludgeon Brothers looked like a million bucks. It's just So it gets an F for you actually. Uh, not really. Yeah. Well, it does automatically if you don't rate it. Well, 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 now wait a minute though. There was one other match that we. Oh, okay. There was one other match that I didn't rate, mm-hmm. and but that was only because that match was used for. Yes, that match was used as sort of like a segue to the Braun Strom. When remember when Braun got beat up in the ambulance and Roman drove That's that right. truck. 
So that match got a no rating because we didn't see the match. Right. If I had to... Oh, I, I, I gave this a C minus, 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 minus. Ah, uh, I'd be in the C area if I had to give it a grade. Again, do you see a trend here? I do see a trend. Yes. Uh, uh, in all the matches, it's a C minus. So Melter gave this two and a half stars. Mm-hmm. CBS Sports gave this a B minus. Whoa. Whoa. Be- whoa, whoa, well, whoa. I mean, like, like I said. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, but, but like I said, the action was good during the match. It's what happened at the end that sort of... Yeah. Uh, then we had the women's title match, Ruby Riot challenging Charlotte Flair. And I thought this was going to save the night. <laughs> now I almost give up. <laughs> Like, what is it with Ruby Riot, and why is she there? This uh, match was so. This is my worst match. Really? Of life. Yep. Ooh. I hated this match with a compassion, and I'm going to go. I'm in a race now. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. I hate, hate, hate Ruby Riot. And I hate, hate her action, and it's the most overrated shit match I ever seen in WWE history. I hate them. They can't wrestle. Go back to NXT. There I am over. <sighs> um. So, um, Riot Squad and Becky and Naomi, uh, they're out there. Referee throws them out eventually. Uh, my thought during this match was, man, Liv Morgan could have played Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad movie. She would have done really good. Yeah. To me, anyway. Um, Charlotte ends up getting the figure eight on Ruby to get the win. Um, I like, I, like I said, I did not think it was as bad as you thought, Fro. Um. I see, right now, I see Ruby Riot as a top contender. I don't see her yet as a champion. I hate her. No. Maybe. She's overrated and she can't wrestle. What? Uh, you're not going to like my grade. I gave it a B minus. Hey, guess what I gave it? Maybe a C minus? Yeah, that was what I was going to guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Meltzer gave this two and three quarter stars. CBS Sports gave it a B. <laughs> and then, after the match, Asuka comes out. And I have to tell you, Fro, I thought this was going to be a ruse. I thought it was going to be Carmella dressed as Asuka. She knocks... Yep. I I thought she was you know she was dressed as Oscar. She knocks Charlotte out. She cashes in on Charlotte. I really oh, did. So um, that would be so funny. But it was Asuka, and she basically declares, I'm going for Charlotte and the women's title at WrestleMania. <sighs> what a match that's going to be. Yes. All right, now before we get... Okay, before we get to the last match, I got to ask you this. Because for the last two weeks, you know, the... the the rumor right now is that Reigns and Lesnar's going to be the main event match of WrestleMania. That's mm-hmm. that's what I've heard. I've also read there is a possibility that Angle and Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon could be the main event match of oh. WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Which, with all due respect to Ronda... It should no. not happen. Right. But I've also heard Charlotte <laughs> and Asuka could be the main event match of WrestleMania. Mm. So if you had to pick just from those three, what Oscar. match would you have go last? Asuka, Asuka, Asuka. Really? Yes. I think I would too. 
because yeah. because for the last few years it's been you know a couple of the women like I want a women's main event match at WrestleMania. If you, I mean, they are going to uh, bake, uh, bake. <laughs> <laughs> bake. <laughs> Maybe they're going to bake as well. Uh, but they are going to make uh, Asuka the female Undertaker. She's not going to lose at WrestleMania. I can bet you my house on that. Uh, not that I have a house to bet, but right, uh, right, yeah. She's not going to lose. Here's my thing, though. If you're going to do it, this is the time. Oh, this... she's going to lose at the next WrestleMania, at, uh, again, or or maybe as soon. I, I can give her maybe as soon as SummerSlam against Ronda but in a title versus title, title match. match. But if you're going to have a women's match... Main event WrestleMania. Yeah. This is the one to do it, and now's the time to do it. But I think it's going to be. I am going to predict this next WrestleMania. We are going to have Ronda Rousey against Oscar. Streak against like I think Oscar is going to keep her streak. Oh my gosh! Next WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, I do. what crazy this that'll do. be! I I do think so. Well, we'll have to wait and see, my friend. And then, then we have the main event, which... Finally, something I can, didn't give C- to, because <laughs> this was pretty good. All right, good. WWE this title, game. six-pack challenge, Baron Corbin, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the champ AJ Styles, Shane McMahon out at ringside, and we're told that Daniel Bryan was not there because he had a family commitment, wink, wink. <laughs> Come on, you all know what he was doing. You all knew. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, but no, this match. Oh. If if it hadn't been for Castle and Lethal, this would have been the match of the weekend. I really, really, really like this match. It was so... The beginning was so good. Cena yeah. AAs everybody... And when Styles goes, he stops, and it's so good. Yeah. Oh, this was such a good match. There's so many spots. Um, yeah. I liked the spot where Ziggler and Corbin are in the crowd, and they go through the hockey glass, because they do play hockey in Columbus, Ohio, home of the Blue Jackets. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked... Owens and Zayn when they were the only two in the ring and Zayn's like I'll pin me you'll be the champ just pin me and Owens at the end is like nah I'm not buying it and he beats him up and Shane gets super kicked and oh so many good things it just really was um uh, uh, who who went You're going the... to be really surprised by my rating for this. Well, I, I know it's not a C, so... No, it's not a C minus. Um, but in the end, um, Owens hits the pop-up powerbomb on Cena, but Styles mm. hits the phenomenal forearm onto Owens that knocks him out long enough to get the three count in the victory. Styles retains the title. I gave this an A minus. I gave this an A again. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I really, 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 really like this match. Meltzer gave this four and a quarter stars. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, this was your match of the weekend. Huh? Yes. Oh, interesting. And CBS Sports gave this an A. So, pretty much we're all in agreement that... Uh, this, except for this match, and depending on how you feel, the opening match, the the show sucked, except for the last match, and like I said to some, I, I'm, the I'm going to surprise you and give this a B. Oh, man, this is a tough call. It's so near a C. I want to give it a B, but there was some... You know how... The last match saved, saved it. it though. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It absolutely did. 
I'm going to make a sandwich comparison because I like sandwiches. Mm-hmm. You know how? Okay, let me let me I'm ask you this. Have a sandwich. What's your favorite sandwich? Oh, I can't say that sandwich out loud. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. That, that is my favorite. Sandwich. Okay, so <laughs> w- when I'm at home on weekends, <laughs> I like to have a bologna and cheese sandwich. I like to slab, t- you know. A bologna on each bread, put a cheese in the middle. If there's no bologna, you know, I'll go for like turkey or roast beef because that's a good substitute. Mm. Then you have ham. No no disrespect to those who love ham sandwiches. It's good, but it's not necessarily the best. That's what I look at fast lane is. You have the you have the bread, you know the bread is gonna be good. You have the cheese, you know the cheese is gonna be good. The the deli meat really wasn't that good, so I'm gonna give this a C. I know that's a terrible comparison, folks, but that's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> um, but the majority of our friends on our Facebook group gave this a C. One person gave this an F. One person gave it a D, and one person gave it a B. Mm. So very, very interesting. Now, I was so close to give it a C, but the the one match saved it. Oh, it, it was so close as far as giving it a grade. So, um, but yeah. So I, I'm going to say all in all, we had a very good weekend of wrestling. Yes, we did. We did. Ring of Honor hit it out of the ballpark. And WWE, you know, the main event is what saved the show. It really is. Definitely. And I want to read real quick, as soon as this pops up, a tweet that was posted on Facebook because, you know, you can tag, you know, you can do that sometimes. You should you should try that sometime, bro, is get your tweets put up on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved this quote. Uh, this was from fellow indie wrestler Steve Weiner, uh, the artist formerly known as the Turtle, because that's what he was. He's no longer the Turtle. What What happened, Steve? We got to have a talk. What, mm-hmm. what, what happened? But no. The thing he wrote, or the thing he posted pretty much to me sums up what the state of professional wrestling is right now and on oh, where is it? it i i saw this last night he, man steve you put up a lot of stuff i'm gonna have to start talking to you oh god where is okay stay stay with me folks i'm gonna find this Hey, I want me to tell you a joke. Yeah, go right ahead. Knock knock. Who's there? Rain. Rain who? Ring a ling a ling a ling a ling. Oh no. Oh, this is a Mr. T uh, anti-drug ad. Whatever. Okay, we need to close it down now. All right, all right you that know what? Hold on. Good. I'm going to go on Twitter real quick. Uh, yeah, why don't, why don't we do the plugs while I find the quote? Uh, you can uh, follow the show on Twitter at Wrestling Show 11. Fro, where can they follow you? They can follow me at Banani Scram. And if you don't know how to spell Banani Scram... Follow Bill and follow me through him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at House of Bill. That's pretty uh, pretty simple right there. You could join our Facebook group. It is That Wrestling Show fan group. You just um, type that in in the search bar and you are right there. And if for some strange reason... 
you can't find it, just click on the link below in the description box and you are right there. Um, you can check out the Facebook or, or the website, thatwrestlingshow.com. And don't forget to visit the Patreon page, like I mentioned earlier, patreon.com backslash Bill's World of Podcasts. And you, you guys can help out with not only this show, but some of the other podcasts that I do. Okay, well I can't find it, so I'm just gonna re- I'm just gonna say it from the best that I can remember it. What the, what did you talk about on another digital citizen this week? Oh what yeah, Fro, what did he talk about on another digital citizen? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking, uh, Bill. We talked about the strice and the fact. Oh yeah, Barbara strice. Because she's cloning those dogs. Mm-hmm. Dummy. Not that- Dummy, oh. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the strike sound effect. All right. Uh, this week on Sharks Pond, I discuss an episode called "Baby's Boobs Destroy Society." Oh, I love that when they go away. Literally. Yeah, they literally do, folks. If you have not seen it before, mm. they they mm. literally do. Okay. Um, yes. So, oh, I found the quote. Yay! I found Ooh. it, and I'm gonna save it. So, okay. So, uh, Steve retweeted a post on Twitter from a at, at B C A F C Mark, and I think this is perfect about where we are in wrestling today. WWE business is at an all time high. New Japan. Producing classic show after classic show. Ring of Honor. Breaking attendance records. The indie scene is thriving. Promotions and talent have never been more accessible worldwide. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. Ain't that the truth? If you don't watch Impact. (laughs) If you don't watch Impact. And you notice they never mentioned Impact. I wonder why. <laughs> nobody cares. That's yep. Why. Uh, next week. Nobody cares. cares. The trouble I've seen. Yes. Uh, next week, I don't have anything planned at the moment, so we'll just say that we're going to talk some stuff. Uh, if anything happens, we'll let you guys know. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I will predict WrestleMania next week. Really? Yeah. All right. Because in two weeks is our Hall of Fame preview show where we're going to go over the class of 20, 2018. Oh, I didn't say this year's WrestleMania. Oh, oh I meant next, year's. next Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then in three weeks is our big. Big, 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 big WrestleMania preview show. We're going to cover WrestleMania. Some amazing gifts. Yes, people are going to win prizes. Oh, and you know what? We got to announce the first celebrity. Are you guys ready? Well, I know you're ready. To sing the national anthem on our WrestleMania preview show, Fergie. We're going to give oh. Fergie the chance to redeem herself from that atrocity. How, how can you see? Yep, we're going to give her the chance in three weeks to redeem herself. That was almost correct. Now, yeah, that was about right. Uh-huh. That was about right. Thank you. So, on that note, everybody have a good, safe rest of the week. Have a wonderful weekend, and... Oh, you forgot to, uh, something. Oh, what? Wrestle on! Oh, wrestle, wrestle on! Yep, we'll talk to you guys next week. Happy St. Patrick's Day for those who celebrate it. Bye! Bye.